hi everyone welcome back to my channel sugar mama tv if you haven't already subscribed please make sure you do now this video is actually a subscriber request video it's probably one of the most popular questions i get asked personally all the time and that is how to i maintain minimalism in my home with a child who is really messy and loves to hoard things. Now this is definitely a very challenging area to deal with when it comes to minimalism, but I have put together a lot of tips and tricks that I personally use in my own home with Rocco to maintain a sense of order, um, harmony, and I guess tranquility in my home. So I've actually got so many tips, I'm dividing them across three different videos. So there'll be three parts of this video, this being part one. And each video has up to seven easy to follow tips, tricks, tools, and strategies that will help you maintain minimalism in your home. Now, before I launch into this video, I want to make it perfectly clear that I am not and not trying to be a parenting expert, nor do I ever say I'm a minimalist. I simply say I incorporate a minimalistic philosophy into my head, heart, and mind. And I'm very passionate about minimalism. It's probably one of the best things that I've ever fallen into. And since incorporating it into my life, I have never looked back. All right, tip number one is to have a box, a bag, or a basket for maintaining and holding all the toys. Now this is, by having this, we actually start to put a boundary or a bit of a cap as to how many toys is simply enough. I say to Rocco, when this basket starts overflowing, that's enough, no more toys. And that is often a signal for us to go through the toys and work out which ones we still love, value, use, and appreciate. And when there's too many, we simply start downsizing and getting rid of some. But it means that we can show kids that once this is full, you are full, you don't need any more, and that you have more than enough. Tip number two is to educate, empower, and inspire children around minimalism. Make sure you regularly stop and take the time to explain the, the energy that comes from having a clean, tidy, organized home. Explain the space, explain the feeling and emotions and energy of that space. You know, that sense of order, calm, tranquility, because when we create those environments, that's also where creativity, imagination, connection can flourish. Um, I know for myself personally, when Rocco and I clean up and tidy up together, by the end of it, he'll say to me, look, mama, clean, tidy, calm energy. He actually gets it and he appreciates it as well. Tip number three is to test the excess. Now, what I'm talking about is those moments when you think your kids have got way too much, but you are scared about throwing out your kids' toys in case you get caught or they, you, you accidentally throw something away that's really valuable. So this is what you do. You get all those toys that you think the kids aren't playing with anymore or they've outgrown. And you simply put it in a box away from them, store it in a cupboard where they cannot see it and cannot find it. If after, say, 30 days, you've noticed your kids don't even notice they're missing, haven't looked for them or asked for them or had a panic as to where they might be, you know that you can safely get rid of those things. Your kids have outgrown those toys. Tip number four is to respect the broken toys. Just because a toy to us appears broken, it may not be broken in, in your children's eyes. Remember, broken toys are still toys and they still and they may be even more important to your children. Children have the most incredible imaginations and sometimes that broken toy can actually transform into so many different things. So make sure you actually pay attention to what toys your children really love playing with. Tip number five is to focus on quality over quantity. We all want to see our children's face light up when they see hundreds of presents beautifully wrapped up on the day of their birthday or say something like Christmas Day. However, that sometimes isn't the right thing. Often when we buy cheap toys and multiple toys, they break really quickly and kids get really bored with them. And also when there's excess toys, some children can actually find it really overwhelming. So make sure you stop and do the, take your time to do some research as to what toys you really think your children actually want. And sometimes that may mean having to spend a little bit more to get a higher quality toy. But remember, if you think about your toys that you played with that were deeply implanted in your childhood memories or really happy memories, it's those, those, it's those toys that lasted a really long time. The teddy bear that slept with you for four years or the blanket that you wrapped around your arm and carried with you everywhere or that toy truck, or that dollhouse that lasted forever. Those are the ones that create memories, happy childhood memories that help us develop into happy, healthy adults. Tip number six is to create space. Do not throw all your kids' toys into one pile in a corner of a room. Make sure you create space. Show your kids how to display their toys with pride. Line the toys up with a bit of space. 
so that your children can step back and look at those toys with pride, value them and appreciate them and actually get excited about wanting to play with them. Turn your children's bedrooms into a display. Make sure it feels like a shop almost, where they can see all the toys neatly lined up looking at them. So they feel empowered and excited about wanting to play with them and wanting to connect with their toys and use their imaginations instead of sitting in front of the television or a computer screen. And then the final tip for incorporating minimalism in your life with children, and that is to teach the art of giving. When I say the art of giving, teach your children how to give unconditionally. Understand that they are giving this toy away and it's going to bring joy into that other child's life. And they do not expect it to be given back and they cannot change their mind. They do it completely unconditionally. Also take the time to explain the goodness that comes from doing this. It feels good to give things away. It feels good to help other people. For example, you might give the toys away to another child that doesn't have as many toys. Or the family can't afford to buy those toys. You could also explain the benefit to the environment in that we're reducing our wastage and reducing our consumption. And then, of course, we can explain the goodness that comes from saving money. We're actually helping that person or that family save money because they don't have to go and buy brand new toys themselves. And another little idea, if you like, and if you're doing the $1,000 project, you could sell those toys online. Use that money to put towards your children's pocket money or to start up an investment portfolio for your children. Get your kids involved. Understand that they are very powerful when they actually give things away. It's great for their soul, great for their mind, and great for their development. Alright guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't because you've got two more videos coming up around this subject over the next two weeks. And if you like this video, please make sure you give me a thumbs up and make sure you have subscribed. I'll see you in seven days. Ciao for now guys.